Hey everyone, my name is Carlos and I'm from Maximum System Support, which is a website that I manage myself in Facebook. The website or the page it's in Spanish, so most likely it's not gonna be of any use for you. However, good thing is that I do speak a little bit of English, so it might be good for me is to start sharing information that I've learned in time about Hackintosh. I've seen a lot of you guys trying to install the operating system Mac OS X Maverick onto your PCs and a lot of you are struggling. Now I advise a couple of you guys to install the operating system using Clover. Clover is basically an application which is for pre post installation process. It will allow you to install the bootloader in your USB and also in your hard drive. However, there's a difference between Clover and Multibees. When you use Multibees Unibees guides, Unibees will help you to prepare your USB to be able to boot from your computer. And Multibees, which is the post installation part, will help you to install drivers, uh, also the fake SMC file, which will help your computer to be known as a Mac. But Clover doesn't do this. So this is where Hackintosh Vietnam tool comes. This application will allow you not only to update the Clover installation that you already have, but also it will allow you to set up different things within the fake SMC uh, file and also on the SMC BIOS, which is once again one of the files that it will help you uh, it will help your computer to be recognized as a Mac. So download the application, it's called Hackintosh Vietnam Tool. You double click it and you will get to this part. So as you can see in here, this is the latest version, version 1.7.3 from July 3rd, 2014 and it will update Clover to this version 2749. So we're going to click continue. We're going to click continue one more time and continue for our last time. We hit agree and we're going to come to the part where you have to change things on the installation. So we're not going to be using Chameleon. I've never used that, that option. You might be able to use it if, you, if you're using like a legacy BIOS installation. But if you're going with the UEFI, then go with Clover. Under Clover, you're going to make sure you select Install Clover UEFI. And where it says Configuration, this is the configuration that will go into your fake SMC file and also into your config.plis and finally onto your smbios file. And you're going to be able to see that within each item. As you can see where it says CPU, you can choose the CPU that you have on your computer. In my case I have a Haswell 4770K which is for a desktop, so we're going to choose this one. If you highlight this option, it will tell you configuration for Haswell desktop CPU with SMBIOS iMac 14.2. So this SMBIOS is the information that you're able to see and more info on your computer. Maybe if you have researched a little bit, you're going to be able to know that this version or this uh, iMac, this specific model of iMac, started to bring the Haswell uh, processors into it. So that's the reason why you have to choose the correct fake SMC and the correct SMBIOS file to be onto your system. If not, the system will not be recognized properly. You cannot have a Maverick and be using uh, SMBIOS from one of the oldest Mac. It wouldn't make much sense. I, I don't think they're even compatible. So you have to make sure you choose the right one. And this is the part when it comes that software becomes not compatible when you have the wrong information on your system. When I first installed this operating system onto my PC, I didn't use this application. I was using something different. And this information that shows up on about this Mac was not showing up properly. And when I tried to log in into the App Store and download something, it wasn't allowing me saying something about the information about my computer. Also, TeamViewer, someone asked me if how I was able to run TeamViewer. So I researched a little bit about the error he was getting 
and it was something about the information they were able to realize the team viewer team they were able to realize that the the computer that he was trying to run uh, the application from was not a Mac and the only way they can figure this out is by having this information or the file that gives you this information so let's continue with the application over here where it says SSDT I have never used this option and as much as I know you shouldn't use this option unless you're using hardware that is not a hundred percent compatible with Mac the basics of Hackintosh are that if you have hardware that Mac uses on their computer you shouldn't have any problem and by hardware I mean the chip of audio the chip of Ethernet the chip for USBs because Mac uses the same hardware they just put their name on their hardware but it's the same thing so it shouldn't be different so unless you're using something different then you're gonna be having to use an SSDT file in my case I didn't use it and I don't think it's necessary and if you, in your case you need it try to read a little bit more about this because I don't know exactly how it works for graphics this are let me make sure that I think this are the text yeah this is this is the graphic configuration for your graphic card I didn't use neither one of these options because of what it says be cautious as it does not always work and when I installed Maverick for the first time I didn't have any issue so it wouldn't make much sense to just install this when it's already working what I did is that I downloaded later on the CUDA drivers and also the web drivers for my graphic card the latest one of course from the NVIDIA website okay where it says inject EDID that is something I also didn't use but as you can see in here it will tell you exactly what it does so if you're having that specific issue with your computer then go ahead and install it it makes sense right guys okay so where it says boot flags these are the boot flags or arguments that you put on your boot clover or on your clover bootloader if you want to avoid having to type the dash v and all of those things you can just check neither one of these options or either one of these options and you're gonna be able to bypass that part if you instead of looking at the Apple logo you wanna look at the code of the operating system being loaded then go ahead and select the dash V in my case I didn't use neither one of those now kext patches I enable trim support because I have a solid state drive if you have the server memories then you can go ahead and disable ECC memory I chose Intel, Intel USB 3.0 after sleep which is one of the problems that most people are having when the computer goes to sleep so I chose that one just in case I never had the issue but just in case now in Kext the first one and this is the most important one you have to make sure you select fake SMC version 6 that's a must you have to select it and this one I also used it I'm not quite sure how it works but it makes sense for to install it because apparently it makes that the the battery for your UEFI is not gonna reset automatically or the memory for you for UEFI is not gonna reset automatically so try to have that in mind for CPU power management I only check the null CPU power management because that's a file that I was supposed to download when I installed Clover for the first time so if they suggested to go ahead and select that option then I'm gonna do it again and as you uh, you can see over here where it says action on that row all of the options that I've picked they all say upgrade and that's because I already have them installed on my system if you have a laptop then you can go ahead and work with battery I'm not gonna use that I have a desktop and where it says network wireless and ethernet I didn't use any neither one of these but I did use the killer E2200 because that's the ethernet chip that I have in my motherboard for graphics I didn't use any of those and for sound 
this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you have to make sure that your original drivers from the Mac are not modified before doing this. The audio chip is called Apple HDA dot kext and HDA enabler dot kext. Those two files are the audio chips. If you modify these files by trying to install a different driver, then if you try to install this patch over here, it will throw you an error. So try to avoid that. If by any chance you already did, you can definitely look in Google for vanilla Apple HDA.kex for Maverick 10.9 point depending on your version. However, for this sound text I didn't use this uh, Hackintosh Vietnam tool I downloaded an all-in-one audio solution which is the one that I installed on my computer and going down below let me take a look over here where it says drive trim support once again because I have a solid state drive USB 3.0 because I do have USB 3.0 Fixes, I picked all of them with the exception of Disable Hibernate. And on Tools, I pick all of them. The reason I picked all of them is because they don't get installed in your operating system. They just get installed or copied into a folder on your desktop. So these are the tools. I already have running hardware monitor, or I don't. I'm going to run it over here. And when I install the first part, this little thing of my CPU and the fake SMC version 6, that made my computer uh, able to be recognized properly and my hardware was showing properly. So I was able to get the sensors of my hardware, specifically of my processor, my hard drive, my solid state drive, and my graphic card. So I didn't have any issue with that. So once you finish with this, you can go ahead and hit continue and that will install the it will install the clover onto the EF, EFI partition of your hard drive. Make sure that your USB is not connected to the computer. And lastly but not least, you're going to have also the tools folder and also a config.plist file as a backup on your desktop. You do not have to copy this file onto your EFI uh, partition from your hard drive. It's already installed in there. There's no need to do that. If you want to make further configurations to this config.plist file, you can use another application. And let me pull this up over here. I have to go to software. Where the heck is my software? Okay, so apparently I moved my software folder. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry software, Mac OS X, and applications, and Clover Configurator. So you can use both of these applications to do this. First you run this, you put your password, and you make sure that you mount your EFI partition for your hard drive, which is that one. Now if you want to make the difference between the Clover that you have before installing this and the Clover that I have, you can see over here where it says Clover and where it says Kex, I have this folder. Because this Clover is compatible with the new version of Mac OS X, the 10.10. .10. But of course the Kex are getting, are getting installed into this one. Which I honestly think that, fol that folder doesn't make any difference, but it's there. Okay, so what you can do is you mount that partition and then you go back to your finder and you run Clover Configurator. With Clover Configurator you can come over here where it says File 
import configuration, EFI partition, EFI folder, clover, and then config.plist. You can import that file and if you come to SMBIOS you should be able to see the information of your computer or at least what makes your computer to be recognized as a Mac. Where it says CPU you will be able to see that information, where it says boot you will be able to see this and where it says devices in my case I had to select the audio as detect because if I didn't do so my audio wasn't working this high current I'm not quite sure but as much as I know with some Z87 motherboards the USB 3.0 was causing, was causing some issues where the hard drive external hard drives were not getting enough power and they were turning off automatically so I'm guessing that this high current is the solution for that where it says kernel and kick patches you can look for that you can look for that as well graphics if you have an old graphic card you can click where it says inject Nvidia this basically will save you some time when you boot within your bootloader you won't have to make any changes on the arguments or in the, or in the graphic menu or CPU tuning menu so if you can come over here and use this application and make some changes it will be much easier for you you can even change the themes if you come over here to themes you click load themes and then let me take a look over here oh there we go so you choose a theme that you want let's say this one or this one it actually looks kinda cool so Magnifico you download onto the EFI partition is gonna download then you're gonna have the option for Magnifico and then you're gonna apply I'm not gonna do it because I have my USB connected to the computer right now and I have experience that if I have my USB connected to the computer most of the times instead of changing my EFI partition for my hard drive for some reason it changes the partition for my USB so I will advise you to disconnect your USB in case you're making any changes to this to this file well guys that will be all for today I hope you were able to understand me this is the first time that I upload a video in English if you have any question feel free to ask I'm not an expert in this topic but I've read a lot and if I have the answer I'll be more than glad to help you okay so have a good one guys and we'll see you next time